headphone highlights, welcome back. We are going to be talking about gaming headsets again today, but it's a bit of a unique one because this is going to be a headset that has been much talked about and for very good reason because this is the Odyssey Maxwell. Now, why is the Maxwell this unimposing, unassuming headset? Why is this a big deal? Well, because it's made from Odyssey. See that little logo right there? Odyssey. Now, if you're a gamer and you're looking just for gaming headsets, you might not be very familiar with Odyssey, but if you are into audio and you're an audiophile, you know the name. And Odyssey has always been pretty good about their gamer line, and they're one of the few high-end audiophile companies out there that really put a lot of focus into their gaming lines. And in typical Odyssey fashion, this is a closed back 90 millimeter planar magnetic driver headphone. Planar magnetics in a gaming headset are pretty hard to find. You don't see this very often, let alone someone like Odyssey who specializes, I would say, in planar magnetic drivers. So this is a big deal. That alone, just the name alone, isn't enough for the hype that this thing has been getting or the appreciation that it has been getting. It is earning those merits on its own for very, very good reason. Now we're gonna talk about it, but first let's talk about this build. Here's what they look like. You'll notice that the left cup looks quite a bit different from the right cup. We'll start with the right cup just because there's nothing there. It's a plain, plain cup that is unfortunately a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. Let me clean it up a little bit. Here's your right, your right cup, nothing there. There you go. It's just blank. There's nothing there. It's very unassuming. It's very subtle. I kind of like how subtle it is. It's just a round metal thing. Woohoo. Cups are, well, the cups are actually plastic, but they're very, very dense plastic, very high quality plastic. Feels like metal. So the cup is plastic. It's a very dense plastic, so dense that it feels like metal. Yoke, also very, very solid. It's a very simple yoke. It allows for some tilt and you can swivel it a little bit inward and then you can actually swivel it flat outward if you needed to do so. And the swivel mechanic is so, so smooth. Look at that. It's lovely. It's great. Great, great mechanic there. We go up into the headband and you got your little Odyssey logo right there. It goes into this headband all the way to the other side. And then here's where all the money is. This is where all the functionality of the headphone is. All the controls for this headset are on the left channel driver. You have your mute switch here, your power switch here. On the front right there is your active, oops, sorry, let's get that out of the way. There you go. That little button right there turns on and off and the different levels of active noise canceling for the microphone. So if you're in a very noisy room, you can hit this button. Um, I think there's two, there's on, there's off, and then there's two other levels of uh, strength in the uh, noise canceling. So you could use that to make, drown out some noise in the back of your room when you're trying to talk into your mic. On the bottom, we have a whole bunch of other stuff. You got USB-C for charging and for audio. So you could just plug this directly into your USB-C on your PC and it'll both charge the headset while also giving you uh, an audio source as well. Then you have a three and a half millimeter auxiliary jack right there. Something to note is that this is not, there's no passive setting for this headset. Even if you're gonna run it wired, you still have to have the headset turned on. It will not run passively. So even if you're wired in, you're still using battery power. So just understand that. I don't like that. I wish that it had a pass, a passive pass through for this, so that I do, don't have to rely on the battery to power the headphone to listen to it, but it is what it is. So just understand that you cannot run this passively. Hi, editing Matt here. I'm taking a moment to insert this because I have realized that I didn't do a very good job of explaining something pretty important about this headset. So we're going to do that now. This is an always active headset. That means that it has to be powered on for it to work. That means that there is a built-in amplifier and DAC in the headset. Now, what that means is you don't want to make the same mistake I did, where every time I get a new headset or a headphone, I always start plugging into things, amplifiers, DACs, whatever, so that I can start getting a sense of what it sounds like. 
I didn't know at the time that this was an always active headset. So I plugged it into an amplifier and nothing was working. I was turning the volume up and down. I got no sound out of it and I didn't understand why. As a result, I had a very bad and, and painful experience because as I'm fiddling around with the headset thinking maybe it's muted, maybe whatever, I hit the power button, the headset powers on and I blew my ears out. Oh man, it was bad. So don't be like me, don't be dumb. This is an always active headset. It has amplification. It is not only redundant to be trying to power a amplified headset into a headphone amplifier, but it's also a potential hazard, both to the headset and to yourself. Because when you are trying to put your active headset powered into an amplifier, you are basically doubling up on the amplification. The headset is not going to understand that it is now accepting power from an amplifier and doesn't need the built-in amplifier to pull that power from, it's gonna instead pull the power from both. And even if you are able to kind of finesse the volume a bit to make it work, you're still in a dangerous territory because you are putting amplification into a headset that's not designed to really accept that amplification. So you are in danger of potentially damaging the headphone or potentially damaging yourself. So you're much better off just not even bothering with it. Just listen to it wirelessly, or if you need to listen to it wired, make sure you're only plugging directly into your source. So, so like right into your PC's headphone output or the output on your controller or whatever, but it does not need an amplifier, nor should you be doing it at all. So listen, learn from my cautionary tale here. You don't need it. You don't want it. It sounds great without. Okay. Then we also have toggles for uh, volume control. And then this one will adjust the volume between the ch your chat and your gameplay. So if you want your game to sound louder than who you're talking to, or you want who you're talking to to sound louder than the game, this will, a, a little dial here to help kind of change the balance of where the audio is. So that's really nice to have. Other than that, it's been a great experience. It runs wireless either through bluetooth or through this here this here usb dongle and the usb dongle works super duper well i think it's like a wi-fi 2.4 gigahertz connection it works extremely well it, it actually provides much better audio quality than the bluetooth setting so i highly recommend if you're going to run them wireless use the dongle and it will run on either your console of choice or the pc you notice that this has PS for PlayStation on it. That's because there's two different versions of this headset. There's a, the blue version here that I have is the PlayStation version. There's also an Xbox version. The difference is that the Xbox version comes with a feature for Dolby Atmos. So you're actually, you're paying a little bit more for the Xbox version, but you're getting the Dolby Atmos feature, which currently the PlayStation doesn't support. So that's why there's different versions, but they both sound basically the same. The only difference again being that Dolby Atmos. So in terms of sound performance, identical. Minus Dolby Atmos. So, but really uh, for the convenience of connect connectivity, I went with the PlayStation version because I have a PlayStation 5. So that's why I went with this. But the PC connection is, is identical between the two. If you want to get the Xbox version so you can have Dolby Atmos on your PC, you can do that. It's the exact same experience as it is with the PlayStation one, except you again, will actually be getting Dolby Atmos out of it. Let's keep moving. Let's keep talking about the build here. I'm getting a little distracted. So incredibly well built here. Yes, this is lots of plastic, but also some metal components and everything in this is so dense and quality machine made materials. It feels like a tank. This thing, it feels so well built and purposeful. It is a planar magnetic headphone, which means that the, the driver is made of an array of magnets. So it is on the heavy side, but we'll talk more about how that weight affects comfort when we get to comfort. But know that yes, it is a heavy headphone at, I believe it's over 400 grams. So it's, it's a heavy boy. Uh, continuing with, with the build, you do have, of course, your gaming microphone. Look at that. It is detachable. 
It's a little rough to detach, but you can do it. It connects with a simple three and a half millimeter. It does leave a little bit of a hole here, but uh, yeah, you, you do not need the microphone. You can run it easily without if you really care for that aesthetic or you don't want something you know, in your face. But the microphone itself is very nice. It's very bendable. It stays in position and the quality of the mic is decent. It's a, it's a decent quality mic. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, here is what the microphone sounds like. So this is what the microphone sounds like on the Odyssey Maxwell. I currently do not have any noise suppression on the microphone turned on. The room is fairly quiet. I don't have a fan on right now. My PC is very quiet, so there's not a whole lot of background noise. But now I'm going to turn the fan on to introduce some background noise, so that way you can hear what it sounds like when there is some background noise. And this is what the microphone sounds like when there is some background noise. I have my fan turned on. You can probably hear that. So this is what that sounds like again, without the noise suppression turned on on the microphone. But I'm going to hit this button and turn noise suppression on. So this is what the microphone sounds like with the noise suppression set to the low setting. You probably can't really hear the fan anymore already, so that's a good sign. And my voice probably does sound a little bit different. But again, this is just the low setting on the noise suppression on the microphone. I'm going to hit the button again to activate the high setting. And now this is what the microphone sounds like when I have the noise suppression set to the high setting. This is really for the most extreme cases where you have a very loud room with lots of devices running. But again, I only have the one fan running right now and you shouldn't be able to hear it at all. So there you go. And then finally, the ear pads are really, really nice. On the inside of the pads, you will have your left and right indicators. That's really nice to see. It makes it really, really easy to know well, how you need to wear them. And the pads themselves are angled, as you can see, and they're very, very soft. They're very, very soft. They're quality, quality pads. I really like the pads. I don't have any complaints with the pads. They are kind of a rectangular shape, but it's a perfectly good amount of ear volume in here. That's at least for me, and I have, you know, above average size ears, very, very comfortable. They fit in there just fine. No problem. So the build is great. The only really compl real complaint I have with the build is this comfort strap right here. It is just a honking piece of leather right here. It's pretty thick, so it's very, very stiff. I wish it was softer, but it's all right. It's okay. It does, unfortunately, kind of do that gross, like, see how it kind of curls when you bend it? It's fine. It does the job for sure. It's a lot more comfortable to have the comfort strap than to not have it at all. And I like it, but I do wish it was softer. But that's not the big problem. The problem that I have with the head strap and with the way that it's decided to build this headphone is that rather than having your typical kind of height adjustment on the headband, you adjust the size and the height of the headphone with the comfort strap. And the system to do so, there are three settings on the headband to adjust the size. One, two, three, you got three holes on either side. And the way that you adjust the size of the headphone is you have two little screws right here, okay? You unscrew those screws, making sure not to lose the washers and everything else that's like in there with it. And then you choose a different hole and screw it back in again and hope that it's the right size for you. So it's not very convenient for one, having to constantly unscrew and screw back in whenever you want to adjust the size. So if you were like, wanna, if I wanted to like use this headset and then like my wife is in the room, like, hey, listen to this, her head's a lot smaller than mine. She won't be able to easily just like readjust it for herself. We would have to literally unscrew everything and then spend 10 minutes screwing it all back together again. So it's not a great system in that regard, but also it's not a lot of options in terms of size. And when you have an odd sized head, like I guess I do, you end up with one side being an odd number compared to another side. So what I'm saying here, and this is admittedly a bit of an OCD thing, but it's uneven. My setting is uneven. I'm on the bottom setting of, of fit on the, on the uh, right side. And then the middle setting on fit on the left side. That bothers me. <laughs> it's just because it's not even. And you can see right here, if I hold it like this, you can see how the 
the headband goes a little lower on this side than it does on the other side. And that's because, yeah, the, the setting and the adjustment is uneven. It's different. Bothers me. But it's not that big of a deal, I guess. Uh, so that's really the only complaint I have with the build is I'm not a huge fan of the head strap, at least the way that it's implemented. Comfort. It is, again, a heavy headphone. Dense materials, heavy magnets. It's heavy. But Odyssey did an amazing job of distributing that weight. It is, uh, you know, significantly heavier than, say, something like your PC38X, which is all plastic, not very dense plastic. It's super ridiculously light. This feels like a toy compared to the Maxwell's. But despite all that weight, the way that it's fitting on my ear with those very, very soft pads and the head strap kind of draping over the top of my head, it feels good. It feels nice. I do feel some weight on the top of my head with that head strap. It's not like it's eliminating the weight on the top of the head, but it's not hitting any pressure points or hot spots. And there's not a whole lot of clamp force. There's a, there has to be some clamp force to make sure it stays on the head, but it's not a fatiguing amount. The pads do a really good job of this kind of softly cushioning onto your head and kind of su sucking on there a little bit. So it feels really, really good. If it, it feels really comfortable, you can feel that it's a heavy headphone, but it's not in a way that it is discomforting for you. If I turn my head rapidly, oh my gosh, it's like <laughs> you feel the weight for sure. But, you know, just sitting down and gaming or listening or whatever, it's kind of a non-issue. In terms of our comfort cloud scale, I'm going to give these a solid eight, maybe even eight and a half clouds of comfort. They're very, very good comfort, again, despite the weight. So good, good stuff. One major feature of this headphone, before we get into sound, one major feature of this headphone, it is a wireless headset, okay? It's wireless. Yes, you could listen to it wired, but it's a wireless gaming headset. But it's a wireless gaming headset that remarkably, according to Odyssey, this thing can get upwards of 80 hours of battery life. Eight, zero, 80 hours. Now, admittedly, people have been kind of reporting, some people have been kind of reporting that it's maybe closer to 40 to 50 hours of battery life in their, uh, from, from their experience with the headset. I can't really say for sure exactly how much battery life this is, because as long as I have had it, it has not run out of battery. I have been using this headset exclusively for a month, four weeks, four weeks of this headset exclusively every single day for at least a couple of hours a day. Okay. And According to the app, yes, there is an app. I'll talk about that in a second. According to the app for the headset, after a month of constant exclusive use of this headset, knowing that I have not charged it once in that time, I still have 65% battery left. The battery on this is insane. It lasts forever. I can't believe how long this battery has last. I, I, it's one of those things where you charge it one time and it does support quick charging, by the way, so you can charge it up like that. You charge it up and you just forget about it for like two months? That's just nuts. That is so impressive. It, wow. Wow, wow, wow. There's not a whole lot to talk about with the app, but... Here is for you on YouTube. This is what the app looks like. And the app does allow you to adjust some. Not There's not a custom EQ, unfortunately, but there are some EQ presets. You have uh, your Odyssey preset, which is the stock preset that it ships with. You have a treble boost. You have a bass boost. You have an immersive preset for like more immersive cinematic kind of gaming. You have a competitive preset. If you really want to hear those frequencies for like reload sounds and footsteps and the like and you even have a specific footstep preset if you just really really need your footsteps uh i personally 
don't use any of them. I think that the Odyssey default preset is the way to go for sound quality of the headphone. The Odyssey preset just sounds the most balanced, the most natural, and the highest quality. You go into the other presets, and luckily they're fairly subtle. There's not a huge impact on the frequency range when you adjust the different presets, like how some other headphones tend to do. But it is definitely enough to damage the otherwise really excellent sound quality of the headphone. So, uh, but it's there if you want. Sound. We can finally talk about the sound performance of this thing. This is a gaming headset made by an audiophile company. And it is competing with other another company that is an audiophile company that makes gaming headsets. So the question is, how does the Maxwell, which has been doing so well and being loved, being loved so much, how does it compare with the reigning champ, the PC38X? That's the question I intend to answer more than anything else because I've gushed and gushed about the PC38X, and this has been my choice for a gaming headset. If you have to have a gaming headset, this is the one to get. It is by far and away the best sounding one. How does the Maxwell hold up to it? Well, it's really interesting. These are kind of two sides of the same coin in terms of a really high quality audiophile level gaming headset. PC38X focuses on like neutrality and timbre and velvety, just loveliness and an exceptional soundstage performance and immersion and imaging. The Maxwell is, the name of the game with the Maxwell is Precision. Crazy Precision with the Maxwell. This is a, an extremely fast, responsive, crystal clear, detail oriented, analytical sounding headphone. It's so rare to have a sound like this in a gaming headset. The bass range is amazing. It is, it hits really, really low. And when it hits low, it hits hard. You get into that sub bass territory, it has exceptional bass extensions into the sub bass, and it hits it hard and fast and accurately. There's very little bleeding in the low end on this. Sometimes the mid bass can get a little booming, but overall it is just a very high quality low end, extremely high quality. And it's got that planar driver speed, insanely fast. Your mid range is fabulous. Absolutely incredible. The detail in the mid range, particularly in the high mids, is phenomenal. It is so precise. It is so crisp and clean. And it doesn't have stuff like the vocal timbre that you get with the PC38X. You're not getting the mid-range timbre that you get with the 38X. And instead, you are instead of having that natural timbre, you are trading that for just excessive detail and cleanliness. It's so clean and clear. It's crystallizing. And when you get into that high mids, into that trouble range, things are sparkling and you just hear so much. You hear so much. The detail is wild. And for a gaming headset, it's, it's, I, I've never heard a gaming headset that sounds this clear and this detailed. The PC38X, understand, is an incredible sounding gaming headset yes it's still i mean we're, we haven't talked about which one's better yet and it's probably spoiler alert, there's probably not really going to be a which is better answer here but where the pc38x makes things sound really really natural and inviting and realistic sounding this thing this thing just the detail retrieval is is the name of the game it's so it's so incredible the detail you get out of this and the trouble range it is, there is a bit of a roll off in the trouble, believe it or not. I believe really after kind of your 10K, there's a pretty steep drop off after that. So you don't get much after 10K, which is kind of confusing, but anything before that, it's so brilliant sounding. It's so detailed. It's so fast and snappy and quick and 
Oh my goodness, it is lovely. I've never really had to go sibilant on me, even though it can get pretty bright and it can even get kind of hot in some places. It's never gotten sibilant, it's never been fatiguing, but it could definitely get high, high, and high. It can definitely get high highs and it can hit them really, really, really quickly, really, really sharply and really sparkle. Sounds like a good headset for something like Last of Us. Sounds very detailed. Yes, this would be a great headset for competitive gaming too. If you, um, something like, I had someone talk to me recently about um, playing Hunt and not being able to hear those micro details uh, to give them that kind of competitive edge. This will give it to you, dude. This has such great micro detail. And coupling that with it having pretty decent soundstage and incredible imaging. Soundstage and a closed back headphone. To this degree, the soundstage you get out of this is very, very rare. It's not a huge sounding headphone, right? It's not, it's it's nowhere near the soundstage you're getting out of the PC38X. Let's be clear about that. PC38X completely trounces the soundstage performance of the Maxwell's. But for a close back, the Maxwell soundstage is great. It gives you a great sense of immersion. It's more than enough space that you need to have this sense of spatial awareness and then the imaging is oh it's so precise the imaging is almost perfect no matter where around me i hear something i hear a bird tweeting to the left of me and flying over my shoulder i know exactly where it is exactly and i i can almost feel it fly over my shoulder and go into the, go out in front of me the imaging is fantastic if it had something like the PC38X in terms of soundstage, it would be just an absolute no-brainer of a, of, a, of a winner here. But what it can do is still really, really remarkable. It's great soundstaging. It's amazing imaging. And then the overall clarity of the sound of the sound signature is just, oh my God. But is it better than the PC38X? Well, PC38X gives you a bit more warmth in your sound signature. Uh, this is a lot more of an analytical headphone. This is a lot more of a natural headphone. PC3X has timbre for days. The timbre on these is fantastic. This cannot compete with a natural timbre, but PC38X doesn't have anywhere near the detail and clarity of the Maxwell. So two sides of the same coin. They're both amazing audiophile level listening experiences but one is detailed and analytical, while the other is neutral and and beautiful sounding and natural sounding. So you gotta kind of like pick your poison here. Which more, which kind of direction do you want to go? I can't tell you which one I prefer because they're so different. I can't tell you which one I prefer. For they, I prefer them for different things for different games. But there's no denying that the feature set of the Maxwell sets it apart. This is such an incredible feature packed headset 80 hours of battery life true wireless B connecting bluetooth i would recommend but you can and which means you could even have this thing connected to your freaking phone if you wanted to but connecting it with the the dongle it just sounds incredible it sounds amazing it's so good and you know, as as amazing as the 38X is, it doesn't have that functionality. You cannot run these wireless; they have to go wired. But you know, again, two sides of the same coin. Lots of technology, lots of complexity, lots of features. Very very simple. Plug it in, and it works. The only the only feature you get on the PC 38X that's on the headphone is this little volume adjustment right here on the side. That's it. That's all you get. But. Yeah, the Maxwell is incredible. The Maxwell is amazing. And it's uh, definitely caught the eye of Deep Pockets because Odyssey, the audiophile brand, has recently been picked up by Corsair. Hi, editing Matt here again. So I just misspoke. Odyssey was not purchased by Corsair. They were purchased by Sony. So Odyssey is now part of the Sony Electronics lineup, not Corsair. I don't really know why I got that mixed up. 
Uh, I think it might have to do with the, the release of the Virtuoso. I just got things a little mixed up in my brain and I could be dumb sometimes. So, but understand, no, not Corsair. They got purchased by Sony. So Sony now owns Odyssey. Sony is now working with Odyssey to potentially do some cool stuff. We'll find out, but I want to make sure that was clear. So they're going to be working with Ozzy in the future for to making just I cannot wait to see what they end up releasing. Just insane gaming potential uh, coming their way for Ozzy to have their pedigree and their experience and knowledge to be going into Corsair and have Corsair pockets to pay for like, you know, design and funding and stuff. I cannot wait to see what they end up building together. I have really, really high hopes. I also really, really hope that um, the audio file stuff that Odyssey does um, keeps going because I'm you know, once again my LCDXs are still like one of my favorite headphones ever. So I, I hope I hope it doesn't go away. <laughs> I hope it doesn't just become gaming headsets, but it's 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 very interesting, regardless. And clearly, the Maxwell here is was like the catalyst. I think for Corsair deciding, oh my God, we got to pick them up because now they're a major competitor with this thing. And it makes sense because yeah, this thing is incredible. It's an incredible gaming headset. So thank you all very, very much for watching. I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I'll be seeing you again in the next review very soon. Take care.